Today, I'm going to be trying to defeat the hot new roguelike Pokemon game with only ghost type Pokemon. I've been addicted to this game and it's been my life ever since the last video. You can play this game on mobile, so even at work, I'm secretly grinding away. I've been trying to get a bunch of shinies from the egg machines for a shiny video, and I just happen to come across this guy. Now, you might notice that this isn't your mass normal shiny. This is a custom shiny, and it gives luck too, which is amazing for getting better items throughout your classic runs. I got really lucky with this little guy, and this is why I decided to do a ghost run. Now, I've won a couple of classics as you can see, but only two of these runs were true wins. The others were just me retrying to reap the benefits of winning. You know, egg vouchers. So I'm trying to get a legitimate third win today. So I thought, why not ghost types? Since we got this guy. I've played enough classic runs to know this won't be easy. The runs can be going amazing, but if you're not careful, it can all end at one of the main fights in the game. The rules are simple. We can only use ghost types. This includes our starters and any we find by regularly playing through the game. And of course, retries are off. So I boot up a new classic run and get to picking my ghost starters. As you can see, I have a number to choose from, but since I've played classic a couple of times now, I won't be grabbing what I think is common, such as Ghastly, as I feel I always see Gengars in the ghost biomes and among other things. Now I did have my team planned out already, but there might be a change since I just thought of a good starter. So first, of course, I have Yamask, Luck 2, he looks great, and I've already lowered his entry cost to 2. Since when you get a shiny, it gives you a bunch of candies, and I'm sure it gives you way more since this is a custom one. As well as it having two great egg moves and decent IVs. I am going to try without Pokerus since we have luck, and well, there's no ghost types right now with Pokerus, so yeah, with eight points left, we don't have too many options. Sinistee is a great pick, but we do have other versions in this game, so I decided on Sinistra instead. Horrible IVs, but at least it has Leech Seed. Gimme Ghoul is also a great pick, however, one, it costs too much, and two, it costs too much. Now, nah, but the thing is, I feel like I always encounter Goldango as a boss, so we have a good chance of getting one. We don't, it's a rare boss. Which reminds me, I can't start with a legendary, but if I happen to find a ghost legendary in the run, and manage to catch it, then I'll be allowed to use it, as at that point I'm risking the run to catch the thing. Now our final pick. Grievert is great since it has the pickup ability, so it grabs useful items, but it's kind of slow and I just can't pass up on the Pokemon I almost forgot about. I forgot about this little guy, Hisuian Zora. Amazing typing. So amazing that I can't leave him here to rot. I'd say Poltergeist is interchangeable with Grievert, but we'll see how that goes. The good news about Yamask is we can just cruise through the beginning portion of this game, since with Aura Sphere, we demolish all of these normal types. Not only that, but just having powerful egg moves gets rid of all that RNG in the beginning. Well, most of it, since you can do so much damage to your enemies. Right on floor 5, I get a crucial item for a monotype run. The map which will allow us to choose which biomes we go to when prompted. And as someone mentioned in the comments on my last video, all the biomes are just paths. And when you move from one biome to another, sometimes it's guaranteed, and sometimes there's a chance you can split off into different paths. With the map, it'll occasionally prompt you to choose between one of the next biomes in the path, assuming it has more than one choice. So hopefully we can make our merry way to where the ghost types are guaranteed. Our first rival fight wasn't hard at all, thanks to our powerful egg moves, but it gives us crucial information for the rest of the run. One, which Pokemon he leads with, which in this case will be Torterra, and his second Pokemon is Starly. And I was gonna make a rule to use non-ghost shinies if we find them, since it's still 1 out of 2,000 chance, but I didn't think we'd actually find a shiny, so I guess I'm going to catch the shiny Batrat I found on wave 10. I'm not making this up. I mean, you see it too, right? I'm not going crazy. So the rule is, I'll use shinies if I find them, but I won't be allowed to use them in battle, which I don't think will be an issue, as I've never seen anything use Roar or Whirlwind. The only thing I've seen so far is switching out moves like Circle Throw, so hopefully that doesn't happen. And if it does, we'll just deal with it and we'll just sack the shiny. Another thing is, if we get to a team of 6 ghost types, I will need to release the shiny, no questions asked. So let's reap the benefits for this run, as it's not every run you just find a wild shiny. Welcome to the team. Sort of. Patrat. Now let me know, do you guys say Patrat or do you guys say Pat Rat? Hopefully you guys say Patrat, because Pat Rat just doesn't seem right. Oddly enough, that thing almost ended my first run right there. And as you can see, we now have a B- in luck. Hopefully we get, well, lucky. Can we just admire this beautiful shiny? I mean, it's so much better than the original. And the original isn't even bad. Also, without Yamask, I'd really think I'd be struggling with this challenge. So far, he's the one carrying everyone on his back. Right after floor 20, we get our first map change and we have the option of grassy fields, metropolis, and lake. And the fastest way to go to a ghost type is through lake. 
As from lake, we go to swamp, and from swamp, we go directly to graveyard. Hopefully. Now from here, we took on some water types, and eventually Finn showed up, and this challenge is starting to seem like maybe I need more prep time. Like egg moves and such, because the only one I can really use right now is Jamask. Or so I thought. I'll get to that later. And well, Grotto was razor leafing. And honestly, thankfully I used Will-O-Wisp, and he didn't crit, allowing us to KO. From here, our special attack rose, but it doesn't matter as Staravia is just faster than us. And this actually ends attempt 1 right there. This thing wing attacked everything on my team, including that worthless pat rat I caught. Nah, it just doesn't seem right. Honestly, what do I even do there? It was clear I needed a better strat. Maybe get lucky with a dust stone with Mistrevis, or maybe just try to hatch more eggs for more egg moves. Or try and get lucky with the team Finn ends up with. I don't know, but something needed to happen. I will say, not having Pokerust kind of sucks, but we also need a ghost type to have Pokerust to start the run, and that could take days. Or never. But then, while looking through my starters, I noticed I had a Frillish. I didn't realize this, and it had Water Absorb plus great egg moves. Mysterious as well has good egg moves, and on top of all that, apparently I missed this Hone Edge, which is a crucial Pokemon to have. And it wasn't the only thing I missed, but I think the most crucial was Mimikyu. I needed to grind 12 candies to lower its cost at least by one. This was the Pokemon that was going to bring me to victory, a fairy type to take down Mega Ray. Although now that I think about it, lowering its cost won't really do anything, as even lowering its cost and even lowering somebody else's cost still wouldn't allow me to bring a fourth Pokemon. Either way, it was an obvious pick, and honestly the only Ghost Fairy I needed. Are there any more Ghost Fairies? I'm not sure. But anyways, we had Spirit Break and Wood Hammer. We were looking good. In the end, these were my three. Since I can't pick Honage and Mimikyu at the same time, as it's a point too high, but my hope is, with luck, we can get a Dust Stone fast. So we start off and immediately get the TM for Swords Dance for Mimikyu. Not a huge deal since we already had Tidy Up, but it could be useful. From here we run into our first rival fight, and we see this time he's rocking a Torchic. Which is great, as we're immune to fighting type moves, and if we get Frillish, we'll be chilling. In the second fight of this run, we did come out on top as he switched, and I was able to set up a sword stance to sweep from Staravia and on. And this sword stancing strat worked for a good number of floors. We were definitely off the path of getting any ghost types, but it's still worth playing this out. And as you can see on floor 42, we get a map. <laughs> Let's go! And the floor after, we actually got a dust stone for our majestic Miss Magus. And we were getting some decent items, finally. Shortly after this, we got our gorgeous Cofagrigus. And wow, this is a good shiny. Whoever came up with this, you have my heart. Speaking of hearts, on floor 55 Finn, I use Take Heart. As I've realized, he loves to switch his Blaziken immediately. And Take Heart raises our special attack and special defense and heals any status we may have. Also, this is Manaphy's signature move, apparently. But yeah, now we're plus one and Dino is on the field for 0.2 seconds. But Miss Magus' reign didn't last long. As Kamala is tanky as fuck, the good news is Mimikyu did sword stance. And then we tank an Iron Head. This guy's doesn't make us completely immune to the first hit, but I do think it nerfs the damage. As that did nothing, and from there a Spirit Break destroys this and Staraptor. It did do a ton of damage to Blaziken, but ultimately, we went down. But I still have the tank that is my shiny coffin. That was closer than I'd like. I really need to find a ghost biome, like now. Having Mystical Fire was super useful in this factory portion of the game, and it came in for Byron Sandslash, although Kafa Grigus took care of everything else. Eventually, I did find a spell tag, and lost most of my money to a jaw-locking Dreadnought, since I had to heal after. And thankfully I did, as the next boss was Suicune. All our hard work paid off though, as after we got the option to go to the swamp. And after this biome, we can go to the graveyard. As the swamp biome was insane with rain up and powerful Pokemon. Kafagrigus was a tank, but I had no money and I wasn't getting lucky at all. And to make it all worse, Roxy was the gym leader. And this would be fine had she not had a Drapion, as it's immune to Psychic on Miss Magus. Luckily, Disguise nerfs damage, but Kafagrigus ended up dying and Miss Magus was my only hope. Oh, thank god. Oh, come on! Two Drapions? Unfortunately, this is where attempt two ends. I didn't even make it to floor 100. Now, I really don't think there's a better combo than these three. They perform super well, so I'ma just rock with them for attempt three. Okay, never mind. Attempt four we go. Definitely don't want to be dealing with Incineroar. Rowlet though, I'll take any day. And also on attempt four, a Dust Stone appeared super quick. And on top of all that, we got a Master Ball and a Memory Mushroom for Mystical Fire. Oranguru on our second rival did scare me, but this run was looking promising. Oh, and it got better. We even got a Dynamax Band. Now, only Gengar can benefit from that, but but still, we should be able to find a Ghastly pretty easily if we get to one of these biomes. From here we were sailing and cruising all the way up to our next rival fight. He had his fully evolved Rowlet and it could have been scary as I don't have a 
ghost type move on Miss Magus. However, I do have Mystical Fire, which didn't quite kill, but he just used Pluck, and I got a crit on the second one. Not too bad. Oranguru was out next, and I used Take Heart as he Zen Headied, and it came close, but two Moon Blasts was enough. I feel like that thing is gonna be a problem later. And in the middle of this fight, we see this gorgeous guy again. Now, we don't get healed after this fight, so I just used Kafa Grigus to KO Pidgeot and Mimikyu Magby. Meanwhile, while I was at work, I was grinding Mimikyu to 25 candies to unlock its passive, Tough Claws. And this took me around 4 hours to do at work. I don't know if I'm gonna need it yet, but if we lose, we have it. Over in Classic, I ended up finding some Relic Gold for some cash, and Rorik was an easy sweep with Take Heart, since Graveler missed a Rock Blast and it had Sturdy. And during this whole thing, I have no idea where on the map we got sent. Badlands? Now, it would have been a waste to be here, but believe it or not, I found a boss Sinistra. I gotta check how rare this is. So apparently this is the only ghost type in the Badlands, and it's a rare boss with the other being Steelix. I was worried we'd end up dying only having three ghost types, but nah. I think we're chilling. Okay, we are not chilling. This thing knocked out both Mimikyu and Miss Magus and has an attack boost. Oh, I forgot I had a Master Ball. The run is officially saved. And even better, I think we're in a desert biome, meaning the next one we go to is ruined. So the run isn't, well, ruined. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I'll leave. And of course, my worst nightmare was on the field. I had to get through this entire desert of Drapion before seeing my ghost types. It wasn't gonna be easy. Oh, and Cacturns. Can't forget about them. And the cherry on top was the Sandstorm up, meaning I was missing, but at least the enemies were missing too. Somehow we made it to Hapowdon, and with our newly acquired Sinistra, it was no problem. And with that, we were in the ruins, which only has psychic types. What the fuck? In the end, we fought only Tate, which was funny. And onto the forest we went, where I thought, I was fine, until I remembered Decidueye was the thing with Poltergeist. I thought it was over for me, but thanks to some misses on his part, and I mean crucial misses on his part, and some crits on mine, we ended up winning the battle. Seriously, I need some ghost types. Speaking of which, Rowlet is the only ghost I can find here, but we didn't, and we went to Meadow next instead of Jungle, which was our one-way ticket to Temple. Honestly, there's no point in playing this attempt out, as we have no chance to get a full team of six by the next rival fight. But don't worry, it's all good, as everything was about to change. Oddly enough, this challenge is extremely difficult. Little fun fact, I write the script as I go with these runs, so I had attempts that I was just writing the script for and just deleted if I lost. I had this attempt where it was going super well. I got Gengar, got a Mega Bracelet, Torch Song, Flame Charge with Skeledurge, carried me through some biomes, and we even got Decidueye, but I just forgot to heal before Wave 145 and got demolished. On top of that, Empoleon's passive is Lightning Rod, and Finn just happens to have it, so safety to say I'm never letting him have an Empoleon again. This was getting brutal, and I was slowly losing my sanity. Now, like I said, I unlocked Tough Claws on Mimikyu, and I also reduced its cost. Same with Mistrevious, and same with the Mask. But what I also did at work on my phone was I unlocked Fuecoco's passive, Punk Rock. Pair this with Torch Song, which boosts your special attack every turn, and you have a Pokemon that is very deadly. It's not very fast, but if you get X speeds or maybe flame charge, you're doing some serious damage. And if you get hit, I mean, more than likely you'll tank it. And on top of that, I also reduced Fue Coco's cost. This meant I could now run four Pokemon instead of the three. Anyways, after that loss, something great happened. If you were paying attention, I was underleveled for that fight against Empoleon because I don't have a Pokemon with Pokerus. If you don't know, Pokerus will spread against your team and it grants a 50% increase in EXP. So when I went to start another run, go let had Pokerus, but I don't want Golette. Well, guess what? The boy himself, Wait, Coco, had it as well. I made sure to start as many runs with it as humanly possible. That way, if I lost one, and it was the next day, let's say, I would still have a Wait, Coco with Pokerus to start a new run with, because it's just so difficult to play without Pokerus. Or at least for me it is. I don't like doing it without it. So anyways, like I said, off camera, I started doing work. I was grinding this game anywhere I went. Tough Claws Mimikyu, Punk Rock Skeledurge, both passives unlocked. Everybody's cost reduced to two. Now, we just needed to wait for the perfect run. This was attempt I have no clue, but I started off with a Mega Bracelet, and while we didn't get a map before Wave 20, which is what I've been doing, since it lets me get a direct path to Lake Swamp and then Graveyard, we still went to Lake Swamp, and well, we didn't go to Graveyard, but we went to Tallgrass, so I still played it out. We were getting money thanks to Big Nuggies, and Skeledurge was destroying with Torch Song. So much so that he soloed Finn's Decidueye, Toucanon, Dratini, and Delmize. This seems like a team I can definitely beat. Three floors after that, I managed to snag the map. And now, we were cruising. 
Literally, like, we passed the next two biomes with ease thanks to Skeledurge, and this is the path straight to Temple. Temple has ghost types, and it has some crucial encounters like Gold Dango and AG Slash. We don't need them, but a Steel type is always good to have just in case you need to switch in on something. And just look at our Fire Croc solo tulip with Torch Song. This Pokemon is broken. Even Finn doesn't know what to do against this thing, and Rain is up. I don't know if Rain actually affects Torch Song's power in this game. I'm assuming it does, and if it does, you should be ashamed, bro. Within no time, we were finally in Temple with three lures up to get double battles all the time to have more options between ghost types. Unfortunately, I did run into both Gengar and AG Slash at the same time, so whoever lives this overdrive from Skeledurge gets a spot on the team. <laughs> Big surprise there. This is the worst AG Slash I've ever seen. Is that a shiny Dust Noir? Yo, and it's custom? That is unbelievably lucky. This is so the run. Unfortunately, it only has luck one, but it's a shiny regardless. I will end up probably getting rid of Kafagrigus since I have too many slow Pokemon on the team, but we'll see. And after this, Gengar was ours since I do have a Mega Bracelet. Yo, Multi-Lens on Skeledurge must go crazy. And shortly after this, there it is. The key to winning this entire thing, aside from our Fire Croc, the Gengarite. Everything was looking good. Nothing could stop us now. Not even Wave 145 Finn. As always, he leads his Decidueye, and this time he actually does have a switch for us. Hydreigon. Don't ask me where his Dratini went or his Seedra, but he probably trashed it knowing it couldn't beat me. Torch Song plus Multi-Lens Punk Rock is amazing. I did make the mistake of Shadow Balling in between, as I should have just kept getting boosts, but the good news is I had Citrus Berries on your boy, and he was healthy once more for two cannon. And two cannon is always a great thing to have on Finn's team since it'll always go for Beak Blast, which is just useless since it'll die before it can even get it off. At least in this case it will. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but does Finn actually adapt to what team you have? First he had Dratini, then he had Seedra, and then he automatically has Hydreigon? For the most part, I think I've seen him have the same team throughout the entire run, but this time he has a Hydreigon, which just happens to be a dark type. And on top of that, I've never seen Rayquaza have Shadow Claw. And this right here is why Multi-Lens is a super useful item to have for classic runs. Not only does it give two special attack boosts with Torch Song, but it breaks down bosses easily, which by the way just kind of negates the reduced damage from using this item, but it also breaks down bosses easily since a boss will always go down to the first HP bar it has. Unless you're doing insane damage. But in this case, we take two of his HP bars and a third, and might I say, Skeledurge is tanking hits right now. It also goes through Sturdy. Oddly enough, the only thing that was able to stop our Fire Croc was Delmize. I probably should have just Torch Songed, but he can't have all the action, I guess. Mega Gengar finishes that off, and again, Multi Lens here would have been great as Gengar can't finish Decidueye off. I do have some punching moves on Dust Noir, thanks to some memory mushrooms I got a bit back, and I taught him Fire Punch just for this exact situation, but I'm pretty sure Mimikyu would have been fine regardless. Wow, that was the easiest wave 145 I've ever had. Marnie was no issue thanks to a tidy up sweep with Mimikyu, and on we went. From here, everything was going pretty well, all the way until Janine who led a Vileplume. I did Shadow Ball, but then switched to maybe take down a good chunk of her team with Skeledurge. She got us weak, but Torch Song was going at it and Rain was not helping. Thankfully, I had good coverage until Muck came in and left us on the brink of death. Honestly, Skeledurge would have won here had she not got a speed boost. AG Slash did put in some work though with King Shield plus Iron Head, and he cleaned up from there. We were finally up against the Elite Four, and I was terrified. I've restarted this run I don't know how many times, and oddly enough, this is the only run that has made it to the Elite Four. But that doesn't mean anything, because Elite Four loves to just throw you curveballs, and even if you get past all of them, the champion always has a Legendary, and depending on what that Legendary is... It could be brutal. But either way, our first Elite Four member was just Eren, a Bug-type master from Sinnoh. Sinnoh Elite Four? That's a piece of cake. Okay, I lied. Skeledurge didn't last very long thanks to my worst nightmare, Drapion. I'm getting flashbacks to the desert. And a Masquerain ended up being his downfall. Thankfully, Dust Noir does have Fire Punch, and this was enough for that and Scissor as we lived on 10 HP from X Scissor. Phew! Apparently, Ninjask has Spirit Shackle, the more you know. But AT Slash was able to King Shield, and while it wasn't making contact, this eventually made the AI I use Mind Reader when I attacked, which was insanely lucky. This run is insanely lucky. What can I say? From here, Heracross was in and it made me switch AG Slash out. Alphagrigus didn't tank a hit at all, but it forced him to go into Vespaquin, which was eating our Shadow Balls. 
like, what is that? One HP? There was nothing I could do. I just let my Kofagrigus go down. With my trap card on the field, Gengar finished this fight off. Okay, I am never underestimating a bug ever again. Unless it's Ledian, fuck that thing. The following wave gave me access to the move Trick Room, which I happily used against Bertha. I switched in Kofagrigus as she switched in another Bryferior. Okay, Bertha. And then I Trick Roomed and will o -Wisp her Crook, which was huge as that's probably her biggest threat against Argos. Again, that was just insanely lucky. Eventually, after Kofagrigus went down, I swapped in Dust Noir to Ice Punch, but this Hippowdon has so many healing berries, it wasn't even funny. Thankfully, Mega Gengar is just OP, and a Shadow Ball does in fact take it out from where it was at, but that didn't last long as an EQ ended up being his demise, and then went a lot of others. All I had left was Skeledurge. How am I gonna get out of this? Skeledurge is probably the worst pick for Bertha. No, no, I can't give up yet. I've spent too much time on this challenge. I won't give up. Skeledurge, use Torch Song. Oh my god, you demon! Everything, and I mean everything, right in front of my eyes, went down. Just when I thought I had to start this beautiful run over, Skeledurge did what he did best and sang his little Torch Song. You are my joy, my pride, and everything else in between. We've come so far. I love you. With this, I had no choice but to Sacred Ash and take a big nugget. And then after, I took an X speed for Flint. Now, I figured he'd have Flash Fire on some Pokemon, but did I Torch Song anyways? Of, of course I did. Why wouldn't I? Son of a bitch. Either way, it was game time, and I wasn't going to let Skeletor's win be in vain. I defeated Houndoom with Overdrive of all things, since it didn't have a Dark type move. Typical Flint shenanigans. And then I actually did a lot of damage to this Fire Monkey. If I had just used Overdrive in the first place, maybe I could have lived past here. Now, I haven't learned my lesson about taking risks, and I underestimate how weak Gengar's defenses are. So naturally, underestimating the monkey, I nasty plot. Oh, you are a legend. And oddly enough, nothing had priority. Not even his two, yes, two, Infernapes. Knowing Lucian was up next, I didn't mess around, and I just kept Gengar in. I nasty plotted, which probably wasn't needed, and away they went, one by one. The Elite Four was over with and my team came out victorious. Oddly enough, Cynthia was our champion, as this is random and have nothing to do with the Elite Four you face, unless something has changed. I thought long and hard about clicking this button once again, but I did, and in the end, it prevailed once again. Okay, maybe it didn't, but I can't help it, okay? Either way, since I have Disguise, I just tidied up and Spirit Break Spirit Tomb. Shadow Clawed Lucario, which surprised me that it KO'd, and then Garantina was up. This was her legendary, and unfortunately Mimikyu did not end up KOing, which is huge for her. Now something crazy did happen. I King Shield obviously, which lowered her attack, but then I flinched with Iron Head. This was huge for us until she switched in Milotic. It looks like most of her team is kept the same. AG Slash did go down, but this was only because Scald ended up burning us. But I had an idea. I went into Kofagrigus, who has Trick Room. I did probably set it up too early, but either way, she burns us, and we went back and forth until eventually Skeledurge finishes her. Okay, never mind. Guard Jump is in. Well, at this point, I don't really think I could win. I don't really have anything else left in my back pocket. I outsped, but Trick Room ran out. Oh, I have an X speed up. So thank God that Trick Room was up. And again, I look at my screen in disbelief that Skeledurge did the impossible once more. He took down everything else on her team, and we were in the end game, literally. I made sure to grab an X speed and Citrus Berries for Skeledurge, as well as leading him for Finn. As usual, he leads to Sidui. I know he's gonna switch, but it's fine. In our Fire Croc, we trust. We Torch Songed, and his Fiery Wrath did do a lot, but I have a Citrus Berry, and thankfully to the special attack boosts and the X special attack I have up, another finishes Hydreigon off. Holy crap, bro, you are broken. Uh, well, so much for that. But it's all right, as it's Mega Ray, and no one can really live Mega Ray. Now, I did try to send out Dust Noir, who has Ice Punch, but he switched, and unfortunately, it wasn't doing anything against Two Cannon. From here, we sacked, and AG Slash was up. Honestly, I thought he'd go into Arcanine on my Steel type, but he didn't, and I tried to predict and go into Gengar. Why in the hell does Two Cannon have Bone Rush? I used Sludge Wave, and I really didn't think this would happen. But Mega Gengar is so OP, he destroys half of his team, including including Mega Rayquaza. Now we didn't quite KO Mega Ray, but that still did a ton of damage. And this thing got me down to my Revival Seed, which I had on Gengar, I think Arceus. When I was deciding who to put the Revival Seed on, it was either that or Skeledurge. And it looks like I made the right choice. From there, Ray was locked into Outrage, which is why a Fairy type is so important in any run, because now Mimikyu just Spirit Breaks finishing it off. Then we Shadow Claw Delmize, and Decidueye was his only Pokemon left. I thought I was going to lose, and it feels like every fight I think I'm just gonna lose, but no, here we are standing. 
and Mimikyu, despite not doing more damage past the health bar, still was able to take out Decidueye because it used Solar Beam. And not only that, I still have my disguise up. This team is amazing! I just knew I would need Skeledurge, Mega Gengar, and Mimikyu. With that, I cruised to the next five floors, and eventually, Eternatus was up. I led Kofagrigus as I could burn, but I probably should have Trick Roomed, because the Dynamax Cannon obliterated me. Either way, we got it down with Bulldoze from Dust Noir, which lowers its speed in the process. I got this TM a while back, planning for this, as I couldn't get Soak Basque Legion or Toxic at all. But you know what else I kept? The move Curse. So I used it with Gengar. If I can't Toxic, why not Curse it? And boy was this a 200 IQ play, because this thing started going ham. It destroyed my entire team, starting with Dynamax Cannon on Skeledurge, and everything died afterwards. But Curse was slowly ticking away, and what a curse it was. I was just hoping it didn't use Recover. Mimikyu was last, and thankfully it hadn't broken Disguise. I Shadow Sneaked, and it Cross Poisoned breaking my Disguise. And Curse ended up finishing it off. Holy cow, I can't believe I actually did it. I beat Pokerogue with only ghost types. There was so much prep done to make this video, and I got super lucky in this run. I won't debate that at all. Skeledurge pulled through so many times when he should have just died. That revival seed was crucial. Hell, even the shiny dust noir I got probably made it so that the Gengarite showed up, and I'm glad I came up with that curse strat. I'm gonna be honest though, I completely forgot I had curse up until this point. I knew I wanted to use it, but didn't notice I I still had it on Gengar until I sent it out. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, please like, subscribe, or don't. This took forever. I'm gonna go take a nap.